Hello and welcome. Try this problem on your own, pause the video, give it a shot, and then when you're ready, press play and we'll solve it together. Alright, let's start by reading the function, uh, reading the question, excuse me. It says, which recursively defined function represents the sequence 3, 7, 15, and 31? So let's first remind ourselves what it means to have a recursively defined function. In the simplest way I could say, a recursively defined function is a function, or a relationship we could say, where every step is built directly upon the previous step. So every new step is built on the step before it. So let's look at our sequence to understand what's happening. Um, we have 3, and then we take 3, we do something to it, and then we get 7, and then we do something to that number and get 15, and then 31. So this sequence, right, each step, 31, is built directly on 15. 15 is built directly on 7, and 7 is, is generated or built directly from 3. And notice in all of my choices, they all say f of 1 equals 3. What does that mean? Well, f of 1 means the function f at the first step, so when, when we're starting, right, essentially. We notice that they all say f of 1 equals 3. That's because the first step of the function is 3, so that doesn't reveal anything to us. Uh, but then if we look at what each of these are saying, it says the function and they have, they have in parentheses n plus 1, which is a little scary. Then they have some equation here that's telling us what to do. Um, so, for example, in the next one, we know this is f of 2, right? But to get 2, right, this is f of 2, what would we have to plug in for n? Because this says f of n plus 1, right? We have f of n plus 1. So what does n have to be, right, in order to get f of 2? Well, n has to be 1. So we have f of 1 plus 1. I'm just going to pause for a moment. All I just said was that to get the next step in the function, which is f of 2, we can think of the first step, right, plus 1. That's what this is basically saying. And the first step was 1. Now we add 1 to that, and we get f of 2. Now if we follow this first formula, it says take the number 2, multiply it by f of n. Now f of n, what do we just plug in for n? We plugged in n equals 1. And this is where the recursive process builds on itself. So f of 1 plus 3. So it's saying if you want to know what f of 2 is, go back. Look at f of 1, right? Whatever the, the, one, the, the step was before it, and apply that value and move forward. So what do we do? We take 2 as our base, raise it to the f of 1 power. What does that mean? Well, f of 1 was 3, so it's 2 to the 3rd. And then we add 3. So what does this equal? Well, 2 to the 3rd is 8, plus 3, that's 11. But look at this, we're not getting 7. f of 2 should equal 7, so this one can't be correct. So we'll clear this off, we go to the next one. That's the same stru structure, f of n plus 1, and now it's 2 to the f of n minus 1. So 2 to the f of 1 minus 1, and that equals 2 to the 3rd minus 1, which is 8 minus 1, or 7. So, so far it seems good. Let's keep applying it. The third one, now this is f of 3. So f of 3 is going to equal, well, the step before it, so 2, f of 2, plus 1. So now, notice n is 2, right? We're building it step by step. And what do we get? Well, 2 to the f of n, right? And that's f of 2 now, because looking at n equals 2, minus 1. So that would be 2 to the 7th minus 1. So what's that? Oh boy, well 2 to the 7th. Well, 2 to the 3rd th the is 8, right? 2 to the 4th is 16, and we keep doubling. 2 to the 5th is 32, 2 to the 6th is 64, almost there, and 2 to the 7th is 128. But 128 minus 1, that's 127, not 15, what we need to get. So this one's out. We're almost there. And you, you, you might, if you want to speed this process up, uh, what you might do is uh, look quickly at each of these formulas here to see which of them matches the pattern. And we're going to stumble upon it now in our third choice. All right? So clear this off. So this is 2 times f of n plus 1. So what does that look like? Well, let's go back to the second step, because it's got to work for everything, right? So f of 2. That equals the first step plus 1, so it's 2 times f of 1 plus 1. What's f of 1? That's 3, so it's 2 times 3 plus 1. 
which is 6 plus 1 or 7. So far it's working. Then for f of 3, that's just 2 plus 1, so it's the second step in the function, plus 1, take us to our next step. And that's 2 times f of 2 now, right, plus 1. So it's 2 times f of 2, f of 2 is 7, we just confirmed that, plus 1. It's 14 plus 1, it's 15. Now the next step, right, f of 4, that's going to equal f of 3 plus 1. So now n is 3. So take the third step, add 1, and you get f of 4. So that's 2 times f of 3, right? f of 3 was just 15, but we're at f of 3 for now, plus 1. What does that equal? 2 times f of 3, so 2 times 15, which is 30, plus 1, that's 31. All right? And that's our fourth step in our sequence, so this is correct. And um, if this is really throwing you off, sometimes this, this like notation here is really throwing people off, what you could think of if you focus on this is to say, okay, we take 2, multiply it by f of n, it's always going to be one step behind us, and then add 1. That's what this is saying. And the next one, for example, is saying 3 times f of n minus 2. Well, you're interested in n plus 1 here. So you take 3 times f of n, which is 1 before n plus 1, and then subtract 2. So that's how these formulas usually work. All right, I hope this helped. Thanks.